A class, uh, question 53 says the Dallas University Health Center is running a clinical trial comparing two medications to treat fibromyalgia. They used to, com uh, they needed, or they need rather to compare the ages of, of the two groups receiving the medications and their ages follow. So we have students in group A, 7A and 7B. And I did go ahead and pre-enter those values in the cal my calculator. So, um, they're already here. One of the things I want to remind you of is that um, these checksum numbers are really helpful just in, in kind of ensuring that the data was entered correctly, especially for larger sets. These, these only have 60 numbers, and I can double check those visually. But um, once your data is in, if you press stats and go over to calculate and look at one variable statistics, and I'll do this for the top list, list one. When I do that, you can see that I get a checksum over here it says the check sum is 914. Well, that shows up right here as the sum of the data, the, the second statistics down. So all the values in that list add up to 914. So it's possible I could have made a couple of errors that canceled each other out, but I think it's unlikely. So I'm feeling pretty confident that I correctly entered the data into my calculator. Um, this problem asks us to use our calculators to make a sketch of the combination histogram and box plot for each treatment group and then to sketch those into our notebooks. Just sketch them. So if I want to set up um, that, the combination box plot and a histogram, I'm going to stats plot to accomplish this. And if you take a look at it right now, um, I have two plots turned on. The first plot that I have turned on, I I have set as a modified box plot, so it should identify um, potential outliers. Um, and I am using list one uh, as the source of my data, so this will be for group 7A. And then I'll go over to plot two, and on plot two, you can see I'm uh, looking at the histogram and again, the source of my data there is list uh, one also. So to take a look at um, those, typically we, we would just hit, and, and I, I would hit just uh, zoom and nine just to see what my calculator gives me. And there's a problem with this, right? There's, there was a very small data set. There was only, um, 16 values or, or less so I should probably have no more than four bins and I've got one two three four five there's like six bins almost when you look at this so I need to change up the the scale of the data and kind of looking ahead at, at group 7b I noticed that 7b has some pretty small numbers there's a 28 there's a 29 and there's also some large number there's a, a person who is 94 years old um in this group. So I think I'm going to make my my uh, interval that I'm looking at the data from like uh, 20 to uh, 100. And then I'll talk about the bin width then. So if I want to do that, I'm going to hit window. And I'm going to set the minimum to 20. And I'm going to set the maximum to 100. And 10 would be too small. Um, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Let me, I think actually if I went with 20, that would cover that interval pretty nicely. So, so when I look at it again, let's hit graph. Oh, well, first of all, let me, let me change the, the Y. Right now, Y's maximum is 4. And by doing that, I've collapsed it down to just two bins. So I'm going to make this Y go to 15. OK, that looks OK. Now, you look at this and like, yeah, but Mr. Roberts, you only have two bins now. Don't you want about four? Well, I, I do want about four. But the thing that I'm anticipating is this group 7B that has these um, very small numbers and, and very large numbers. So I'm going to leave this at this size. And I'm going to copy and paste this into my notebook here so that we can look at it in just a minute. So let's go on and switch this over to group 7B, which that their data is stored in list uh, 2. So I'm going to go back into my stats plots. And instead of looking 
to list one as my, the source of my data, we're going to switch this to list two. And I'm going to do that for plot number one. And I'm going to, oh. And, oh, I see what I did. And I'm going to do that for plot two. I didn't actually change that one. Uh, list two, there we go. Down. Okay, so they're both now looking at list two. And if I hit graph now, yeah, that's what I thought would happen. So because I'm running from 20 to nine, to 20 to 100, right, I can capture this, the small value. Now it's interesting, I, I feel like the, the 29 and the 94 should potentially be outliers, but the calculator is not fl flagging those points um, in the modified box plot up at the top. So I'm, I'm just going to go with the, they're not. Um, so let's look at these two side by side. So it, it does say after we have these, it says compare and contrast the distributions of ages between the two groups using what's the center of the groups, what's the shape, what's the spread, and are there outliers of the two groups. Um, so if we were to look at them, and again, this was group 7, a, and this is the second one that was listed. This is group 7B. So in both of them, I would say that they're, um, I would say they're both symmetrical. I don't, I don't f feel like the data is clumped on the high end or the low end for either one. Um, in fact, our textbook would call these, um, I think, uniform distributions because most of the bins have nearly the same number of values. Um, so I guess that that would be the shape, right? They, these appear to be uniform distributions. Uh, the center, I, I don't think. Let's see. Well, I I think I think mm, we do have. I I think we've got potential outliers when I'm running from from 94 and this 28. I th I think we do. So I I probably would consider using the mean. I'm sorry, the median as the, my typical value. And if I wanted to look at that uh, um, for this group, second group anyways, remember if you hit trace, I'm tracing plot number one, which is currently reading data from list two, which is group 7B. And if I go over, over, there's my median, it's at 59.5 and 59.5. And if I was to look at, um, one variable statistics because this does show me for list two this does show me the the mean the mean is 58 so you know the mean and the median are very close in these distributions because they are symmetrical and and there are outliers but an interesting point is that the outliers are kind of on both sides so in that second group there's a 94 year old and there's also a 28 year old so i guess those two outliers are kind of um they're kind of keeping, they're preserving the the relationship between mean and median. So I wouldn't say that the distributions are skewed at all. Um, so I guess that's that. And then it says, when reporting the typical age in each group, which is a more appropriate measure of center, the mean or the median? Explain. Oh, I guess this is tough. Um, if I had outliers on just the one side, like if I had a, a 94 year old only, I would say definitely I would be using the um, median because of the presence of that outlier. But the distributions are not, they're not skewed. And, um, and there are, you know, I think you could go either way. Like I said, on, on group 7B, the, the mean was 58. You can see that the mean was 58. And if I go back to my graph, the median um, oops, trace. The median was fifty nine point five, so they're they're pretty close to each other. So I I'd say for, in this case it probably is okay to use either, and I, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So anyways, that was question number fifty three. I hope you found uh, some of the calculator stuff in there helpful. Uh, if you need to discuss more of those calculator techniques, let me know. And some of you has, have expressed interest in. Um, the emulator that I use and you can get the emulator as a free download but getting the a ROM for it is kind of problematic so um, 
So uh, the calculator is, I think, it's Wabbit EMU. So if you look up W-A-B-B-I-T emulator EMU, someone in class says, oh, a, a rabbit emu. Okay. But if you look that up, you can find the software, and then finding the, the ROM um, might be a problem. But you could do that. And then what's nice about it is if you're doing this in software, you can copy and paste those graphs directly into a, a document you're working on. And uh, you don't have to sketch them. You can just you can just use the the small images that you're getting. So that's it for question fifty three.